Well, I guess whoever we are, we would all have an answer to the question, who am I? For instance, I can answer that question by telling you my name and my life situation. So my name is Alexander Johnstone. I'm married to Jen. We've been married for 12 years. We have two children and God willing, a third on the way. I'm a Christian and I work for a church. But I could answer that question by simply saying that I'm a mixture of blood, bones, water and muscles and some other stuff as well. I could also answer that question by telling you where I was born, where I live now, who my parents are, how I'm feeling, what my favourite football team is. All of those would be legitimate answers to the question, who am I? And yet for so many of us, those answers don't seem to satisfy. They don't give us security. And that's why we change our names. We change the way we dress. We change the way we look. We change the way we speak. And all of that seems to indicate we're not very secure in who we are. And some of that must be because we care about what other people think of us. Simply put, we rate each other. We assess each other's performance in the classroom, on the sports pitch, in the gaming world, on social media, on how we look. And that's because we live life in community and that community has a bearing on how we define who we are. That's why our security in who we are can go up and down. Because who we are isn't contained within a bubble, it is dependent on others. Because all of us want to be liked and respected and rated by others, and even if we don't, we at least want to be respected by ourselves. And that is when the bubble can so easily burst. For instance, if my identity is defined by what culture says is acceptable, well, what happens when I don't fit in to the culture around me? What happens if my views are seen as outdated or bigoted or extremist? If my identity is defined by what will be accepted by my friends, then we're at the mercy of whatever our friends say and do. So suddenly what I wear, what I think, what I say, whom I follow, what I value can either get me more friends or less friends, depending on whether I conform to what my friends think is important. If my identity def is defined by my own standards and my own expectations, well, what happens when I fail? What happens when I miss out? When I don't get that job? When I don't get onto that course? When I don't make the grade? When I don't get into the team? When I don't get that boy or girl? See, if our identity is based on what others think, or even on what we think about ourselves, well, it's not very secure. And I know that because people are constantly searching for a secure identity through change. Even though we talk about being true to ourselves. And in reality, being true to yourself is only going to work if someone else thinks that's acceptable too. But I have good news for us. I have good news because God says we can have an identity that is completely and utterly secure and is not dependent on anyone or anything else. In the Bible, God gives us these stunning words in Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. See, the headline is that whoever we are, the Bible says we can have a secure identity. The Bible says we are made in the image of God and we are the only part of creation that bears God's image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and we were made for him. And if you think about that for a moment, that is a wonderful truth. 
because it means you and I can have an identity that is not based on us or dependent on us and our performance. It's not defined by what culture says is acceptable. It's not defined by what our friends say is admirable. It is not even defined by ourselves and how we feel. It is an identity that is defined by God, the one who's uniquely qualified to give us an identity because he made us. And because it comes from him, it is 100% completely secure. It can't change. You can't stop being made in the image of God. You just are made in the image of God. In the Bible says, God says that can't be taken away. And it's of infinite value. And God showed us how valuable it was because in his love, he sent Jesus, his son, to die for us on a cross, to wake us up to the reality of who we really are of the identity we can have in him, made in the image of God, wonderfully and fearfully made, made to know God, to love God, to be loved by God. And in a world that is constantly changing and seems extremely fragile, isn't it wonderful to know this truth in the Bible that you can have an identity 100% secure based on who God is and what he has called you to be, which no one and nothing can take away.